you see my truck today? I can't see your truck for the bees. It's a bay magnet. <laughs> We're headed to Kiln, Mississippi. It's spelled K-I-L-N, but everybody around here pronounces it the kill. The kill. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to the kill to pull some bees out. These are the kill bees. This is about a 40 minute ride for me. I gotta roll up through here and give me some drinks like I usually do. My wife took my ice chest from me. It was actually hers that I had stolen and she decided she wanted it back instead of dragging another ice chest out of the shed i just pile my floorboard full of drinks hey you're gonna have to watch mr ed in his next video get stung up been drinking these body armor drinks i told him if he drunk those he wouldn't have to wear a bee suit and he believed me <laughs> passing all this low land over here close to stennis that whole field all, all these swampy fields right here just covered with goldenrod man Makes me wish I had some hives set up over here feeding them. This is our work area for today. We got bees going in top of the wall there at the soffit where they're traveling down and they're going in at the uh, deck too. I couldn't find anything up here, but I found a good heat signature in the floor right here. So I think I think, I hope and I pray that the ones coming out of the top of that corner cap are just traveling up from here. I hope it's not two separate hives. Couldn't find two before, but it's a possibility. Hope it's just one, but right here is where I think we're gonna be going. I looked at this thing about a month ago, month and a half ago, last time I was headed to Texas. And that's where I got the heat signature through the bedroom floor. I brought one set of scaffold to set up. It's high enough, I don't want to be trying to work off of a ladder. All right, it's 2.59, three o'clock p.m. I'm just getting started. I gotta pull this crown down to here and over to here. And thankfully, just one little section of soffit. Shouldn't be a big deal. Gotta put it all back when I'm done. I'll time this, let you know how long it takes. How many stings I get, because they're pretty overcast. Mr. Ed just called me to see what I was doing. He told me there's a storm coming in. I don't watch the weather, so. Uh, he's, whew, he's east of me, west of me, about an hour from where I am now. I'm just getting tools out and getting set up right now. Whatever time that I have on this, when I'm done, you can go ahead and knock off an hour for how long it would actually take if you weren't recording. I'm also taking phone calls for business as I work, so that's, that's adding a little time to the job, but generally, uh, Mr. Ed and I and JP and a few others that record these like we do, as much as I record, adds about an hour to a cutout, so if you want to know how long this would actually take if I wasn't recording, knock an hour off, about. Working up a sweat already. It's starting to rain on me. So uh, that's gonna hold me up just a little bit. You can go on and add 15, 20 minutes, depending on what the weather does. A couple of things I wanna show you. I got a couple of new knives here. I was using an 11 inch bread knife. I lost it, probably left it on a job somewhere. I just got two 14 inches. This is serrated. That's a smooth blade. I already nicked myself through the plastic on this one, so that dude's sharp. I gotta be careful with them things. All right, real quick, I'm going to show you Roy Nelson's beaver. I still do use the Everything BVAC, and I support Tony with the Everything BVAC and everything that he's doing because that's a great vac, but this also is a good vac. It's going to cost you some more money if you want it, but I'll show it to you real quick. And John does sell these. I'll link his contact info in the description below the video. This here's the motor side. This is the catch cage side. This is how you regulate your vacuum. This is where your hose goes. When you're done vacuuming, make sure you ain't got no bees left in the hose. Keep it running. Pull the hose off and cap it. Just like that. And then your bees will stay in, this, in the cage side. There it is. You've caught a glimpse of this before in some other videos. 
I called it the B briefcase or something. I forget what I called it. There's a the screen. That screen separates right here. So you'd flip this, this side and the other side, leave this one latched, pop the bottom loose, and shake it over your box. There's his card and phone number. And this back here is numbered and signed to me. How about that? Uh, I know a lot of you going to ask, what's the difference why I would use this over the everything BVAC? I'll give the contact info on both VACs in the description below. You can go look on Tony's website at everything BVAC or allmybees.com for the everything BVAC. You can get the pricing on that. Uh, John, you'll have to contact him for his pricing. I think it's 450 plus shipping. shallow hive. Got a bunch of combs in it. Doesn't look like there's going to be a lot of honey, but it's got honey all the way to this back comb here. You can see it right there on that last, or next to, third to the last one, you can see it. Nice little cluster of bees. It's kind of a cool day today. You can't tell it by looking at me because I'm sweating, but I think the outside temperature is probably in the low 60s, something like that. So. They're not all spread out over the combs like they normally would be. Kind of clustering up for heat. All this ceiling pin nailed and stapled. All that stuff's got to come out. All these little staples and pin nails. Everything's got to be pulled or flattened down before I try to put this back. All these trim boards, I got to strip them out. Best thing to do with those, get you some dikes or some lineman pliers and pull them through the back side and it don't disturb the front surface you try to knock them out backwards it'll split out the wood out front and then you got caulking and painting to do all right y'all see what we're dealing with i'm about to wash my hands and get started cutting comb i got insulation and uh, ropes droppings and stuff like that from those boards to pull down on my hands on don't, don't want to be handling no food honey with all that uh, these these cutout hives are just as clean as a managed colony in that regard so if you uh, are questioning whether or not the honey's any good as it absolutely is you just don't want to be nasty hands handling it so i get get my hands washed get a wash bucket up there you need a, a water bucket with you when you're cutting these out especially if i got any honey in them because your tools are going to get wet hard to hang on to and you don't want your hands coated with honey, you slip and go to grab something and can't hang on to nothing. So, gotta stay clean. And then I, and then I got a mess to clean up down here. Oh, this was in your house? Mm hmm. A year ago? A year ago. Last November. Come out of the wall? Is that inside a wall or is that an outside wall? It's an outside wall. I mean, they actually built on the outside wall. Huh? Wow. How much honey did you end up getting out of it? They had moved a bunch of it by then, so it was not that much. I got a help right here with me today. Bonnie. <laughs> Bonnie lives in this same general area, so there's a lot of feral colonies over here. I, this one neighborhood in particular, I've pulled four, I think this is, this may be my fifth colony out of this neighborhood in as many years. So pretty regular over here in this, this area. Kiln, Bay St. Louis, feral hives all over the place. Y'all are gonna crush and strain the honey? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. They want, wanted some of it. Bonnie's gonna help me taste test it because as you know, I always got a taste test. Absolutely. <laughs> got an old dirty queen cage. She, <clears throat> she won't care. 
as long as she can't get out, it's all I care. Got a good comb bucket, cutting knives, dirty comb bucket, wash bucket. And that's about it. We get, get ready to get up here and cut it out. Oh, and just in case, we got the smoker going. They've been really, really docile so far. They're not even bumping me or even checking me out. So right now, just wearing the, the hat, keep them out of my hair. Flipped around backwards so I don't have to try to look out from under the bill of a hat. I don't know if y'all can hear that. A little bit of a different sound. Sounds like wings beating on empty combs or something. We'll start out with this smooth knife first. I'm not sure I'm even gonna keep these for this job. Depends on. Oh, uh, this thing is really sharp. It might be too sharp for what I want to do. And if it's too dangerous for me to cut with while I'm up here, can't really see what I'm doing. Actually, this knife is probably too long for this, for the beginning of this job, because I need to be able to get back here and cut these cones. And the, the way I'm having to finagle my hand in there, it's cutting them pretty easy. This feels like some of that crunchy comb. I think we're probably gonna start out with the spatula. To dry. That's how some of mine were. Drug said to freeze it and freeze it before uh mm -hmm. three combs are out we're starting to we're getting into that little honey you can see this is the one that you can really see on the first video really really sweet flavor there's three stings one per comb keep going at that pace it won't be too bad <laughs> only only a dozen stings left to go bonnie tell me what you thought of that honey it's good sweet 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 honey very sweet the scaffold kind of got me in a bad position. It's too high up for me, but one rung down is too low. Now I got my head up in here with them. They're starting to get irritable. I might come back down and put a hood on so I don't get all stung up. The whole hive's getting smoked a little bit, but that's not what I'm going for right now. I'm just wanting to smoke them out of what I'm trying to pull so that I'm not pulling cones with bees on them. Let's put them on the run out of this stuff on this side. They're pretty well fanning the smoke out of the hive. Hang it. Yeah, I'm just in a precarious position. Got me messing up. Once I get about two or three more combs over, I'll be 
a little better off. Pretty humid today, so I'm getting good and sweaty. Uh, I guess this dark shirt ain't something that they're liking. I hadn't been stung anywhere except for in the back and the shoulder. Uh, first thing was on top of the fingers. I've been stung three times, but they're getting to where they're coming out and bumping me. Not the first one in the face, which is pretty unusual. They usually go straight for the face. But I'm fishing change into a lighter color shirt if I can find one in the truck and put a mosquito net hood on before I go any further. Cause I'm really in a, I had to rearrange the scaffold because of that column sticking out and the way that scaffold board is. Little bit unstable for where I gotta be and I'm too tall for what level that's on, but if I move it down one level, then I can't reach it. So I got my head up in there with them. And it's just making it difficult. I'm working in a, a space that's a lot narrower than my shoulders. So I'm having to kind of worm my way around up in there. You know, it's not a not a big colony. Not gonna take me much longer to get it all out. Vacuuming them is gonna take, take longer than cutting the cones out. Cause I gotta take my time on that and try to look for the queen. She's, uh, I haven't got to brood yet, but I've been here long enough. I'd be surprised if it ain't queen right. Bonnie had to leave. She's about had all the excitement she could stand for today. Find a little bit lighter colored shirt. I think they'll like this one better anyway. You might be seeing Bonnie in some future videos though. Cause uh, today's the first time I ever met Bonnie, but we got talking about bees and she's got six acres over here in this area. Told her I wanted to set up an out yard over here. And I think we're gonna work a deal. So she's probably, she knows it ain't gonna be no one, two, three hives. She's game. She's a mead maker, wants some honey. Not gonna overrun her with bees and they won't be set up there year round, but it's on some property that it's, it's fenced and nobody goes back there. Good spot for us, good deal for her. So you probably probably be seeing Bonnie more in upcoming videos. Now that I got these things open, they're out flying around. They weren't flying around earlier. Making a little headway there. Getting into brood combs right here. I might be blowing the video out with too much light. There you go. There's some less light on it. So we got a queen. I've been cutting the honey off the top of the brood comb. Give them as much honey as I can. It's less honey for me to frame up. And this old crunchy comb, it, it ain't terrible, but <laughs> I'd rather feed them up and make them build a new comb. Uh, only one sting since changing shirts. I don't know if it had to do with me changing shirts or vacuuming some bees because I took about three pounds of bees out of there. They're still, there's another two or three pounds hanging off the bottom of the brood combs now. I dropped the first good piece of honeycomb right there. Just trying to fit up in there somehow. My head's almost touching the the uh, floor sheathing standing on this top level of this platform. But like I say, one level down, that's another foot and a half to, to have to reach and I can I can reach it and cut it with my spatula, but then I'd have to catch it when it fell. And you know what happens then? Thought I saw the queen. You know what happens then is you catch a handful of bees and you get stung a few times. So I'd rather be holding it when I cut it. Even if I'm having to stand up there, I'm, I mean, I'm eye to eye with the combs. That's where I'm at so far. It's 6 p.m. They calmed down for a few minutes and then cranked back up. So I just came down to wash my arms off. My left forearm's probably got 20 stings in it. <laughs> uh, a few of them in the biceps and chest, but nothing major. 
maybe a total of 25 stings so far. Really hadn't been keeping count, so I'm just guessing. Waiting on the cluster up a little bit again so I can vacuum some more. It's about to get dark on me, which doesn't make any difference. I couldn't see under here from the beginning. I got a little flashlight up under there. It's too bright to shine right on it, so I got to lay it on the side. I done misplaced my good flashlight, so I gotta, I'm just making do. That one up there is a good flashlight. It just doesn't, it's not adjustable. So six, six o'clock now, I think it gets dark in 30 minutes or something. Like I said, I couldn't see anything from the beginning anyway, cause I'm turning sideways, sideways literally with my left hand holding comb and with my right hand reaching over my head, squatting down and cutting combs and that's how I'm having to work. So I ain't even looking at nothing when I'm come just feeling. But right at sunset, and as it gets dark, my tactics change a little bit. Where during daylight, if I pull combs out and they're loaded with bees, if I'm not running the vac, if, I, if I've got the vac on and the hose where I can e easily reach it, I'll grab the hose and suck all the bees off of the comb and drop the comb in the appropriate bucket. Uh, after dark, I don't want to, I mean, if I don't have the, the vac running and the hose available during the daylight, I'll just shake the bees off the combs and they'll go airborne and go back to the entrance and end up back in the hive. After dark, I don't really want to do that. I want to put them back in the hive or in the vac because if I just shake them off, they'll be crawling around on the ground. They don't fly much, so I have bees everywhere. And tomorrow morning, instead of having a pretty clean hive with, you know, 20, 50, bees left they might be a good cluster hanging somewhere and i have to make a trip back over here and get them so what i do after dark instead of shaking the bees off when i pull cones down i'm smoking them trying to get them off the area i'm working but these are being pretty stubborn so they'll go to the back side of the comb and hide between combs i'll pull a comb down one whole side especially the brood combs will be covered with bees and rather than shaking them off and having them all over the ground, crawling up my pants, legs, all that. I'll put the combs, I'll just hold that comb up against the bottom of the next one over and they'll just walk right off on it, except for the ones that are trying to rob honey. And uh, I'll either stick them in the bucket and vac them later or sometimes shake them off. But I, I try not to after dark, I just don't want bees crawling everywhere. And... So anyhow, that's what I do. Once it gets dark, I'll see if I can show it to you. That gum stinger in my neck. I do have a laying queen in here. I ain't spotted her yet. I may have vacked her already because I've been back vacking bees in bunches. Kind of hard to look for where I'm at. One way or another, I'll take her home with me. She'll either be in a clip or in the vac.
is the hive removal. I still got bees hiding. You saw, you could see that hole in the floor that I was backing under the uh, bottom plate of the wall. There are some bees in there. I don't know how many, but every time I stick the vac up to the hole, I can hear it sucking them. That eye joist doesn't end at that eye joist, but this is our main entrance from that siding. So coming in that corner cap on the side and then coming in around the edge of that eye joist there. And there's a hole penetrating to this space. So I'm gonna back this insulation back a little bit, see what I got in there after I let them settle for a minute, because I bet you I'm uh, probably going to have a group of bees on this side, maybe the queen of them. Don't know, hadn't seen her yet. May have vacked her, no clue. But <laughs> typical for what they do, they run. Maybe in there, maybe in the wall. I may end up leaving this open overnight, coming back in the morning anyway, just to, just to be safe. That's not necessarily the best plan for me, because that's another hour and 10 minutes of drive time round trip over here and uh, more time putting this back together that i could go and finish it tonight but i can go home and i got other stuff i can do at home work on a video or something <laughs> seven o'clock now i've been done for about a half an hour they're starting to come out of that wall problem is i don't know how many is in there that hole right in the center goes up in the bottom plate of the wall can't use repellent in there because I might drive them up the walls probably got insulation in it I probably could dr drill a hole next to it and try to run them out but I've been waiting them out for a little bit uh, these over here They'll slowly migrate across, but I ain't waiting on them to migrate. The screen's covered up so you can't really tell how many bees it is. It's only about five or six pounds, which is a decent amount. And I gotta put them in the truck with me. It's fixing the rain and I don't wanna leave this thing out in the rain. It's already catching a few drops. They get to ride in the back seat. At least I'm working under the house, <laughs> right? Got a few hundred clustered outside. And about the same inside. Some pretty good storms rolling through, which kind of is good because it's got the bees clustered up a little bit. There's a bunch of them in there, but not. They're not out foraging, they're just out flying around right now. I vacked that cluster from right there. And the ones that were in the air went ahead and clustered there. So noticeably less bees in the air. I probably won't leave 10 bees when I leave here. The queen wasn't hanging on the outside and I don't think she's in here, but I'm gonna go through, go through this little pile here, make sure. I think I got her in the vac last night. I think she probably was in that bunch I backed out of this side. Finishing up heading home, it was exactly two hours to uh, not including drive time to come back over here and chase bees, pack insulation back, close that floor up, put the trim back, break down the scaffold, load tools, clean up the site, all that good stuff. Got paid, headed home, going to look at another one.
open like a child You're so luminous and vibrant I'm always in Times I've stranded, a castaway on an unknown shore of those stranger in the sky.